I want to finish up the free part with the mystery of Chihiro's parents. Take a look at this. Chihiro says, Mom, that building's making noise. But the mother says, it's just the wind. Then she turns around, but she doesn't look at Chihiro. Chihiro keeps pulling her mother's hand and talking to her, but she ignores her and says to the father, I should have brought a sandwich from the car. In the scenes around here, Chihiro continues to try attracting the mother's attention, but she hardly sees Chihiro's face. She talks to Chihiro without looking at her, but she sees the father in the eyes when they talk. Her attitudes toward Chihiro and the father are too different. We've all realized that Chihiro's mother is acting strange. Everyone who saw it noticed it. Because the mother is walking the rocky area of the river, which is dangerous for herself to walk on, and she says to the father, oh no, and hugs him. Then the father goes, it's dangerous. But when they are moving on, all she does to Chihiro is to turn around and says, be careful, Chihiro, in a cold manner. It's because she unconsciously treats Chihiro badly because she's responsible for the eldest son's death. She does that unconsciously though. In her mind, she's taking good care of her daughter and she knows it's not her fault that her son died. But unconsciously, her true feeling reveals in her attitudes such as not looking at Chihiro's face or talking to her in a cold tone of voice. The parents are hiding the fact that they lost their eldest son to Chihiro. That's why the mother is called to Chihiro. Finally, everything makes sense now. The reason why the mother is being so cold to Chihiro without any explanations, or why Haku says to Chihiro that he knew her for a long time, but doesn't tell her where and when they've met. If Haku was a god, as he said, then it doesn't make sense that Chihiro can see him from the first scene, because in this world, gods are not visible to human beings until it gets dark at night and they arrive at the resort kind of place. Then they finally become substantial. Haku is turning into god of Kohaku River, but he's not one yet. I will make sure to define what these gods in Spirited Away are in the limited broadcast. Now, um, Haku died for Chihiro, so, but Chihiro, in return, went to apologize to Zeniba for a Haku by taking a one-way train. Traveling on a one-way train means that she went to the world of death, where she can't return from for a Haku. By doing so, the theme of her being able to live by someone's favor and her returning the favor by living for someone else conclude. It's clear in anyone's eyes that Chihiro goes to the world of death. After Kamaji tells her that no one can return from the world of death, she still rides on the train without a way back, which runs endlessly on water that looks like sticks. It means that she's willing to give up her life to save Haku. That's how the theme completes here. She realizes that she has never noticed that someone has saved her life. Then she decides that she's going to risk her life for someone as well. So at the end, the theme makes a full circle. How the theme of the movie goes round is not explained through lines, but through Hisaishi's dramatic music. That's why the structure of the movie is hard to understand. It's similar to how Giovanni, the protagonist of the Night of the Milky Way train, lives like a ghost in the beginning. He doesn't focus during his lesson at school in the first part of the story. That's because a poaching ship that hunt sea otters got into an accident with his father, a fisherman on board.
Giovanni is so worried because his father might be dead. That's why he's absent-minded at school. It's hard to tell if he's alive or dead. But then, he gets on the Milky Way train with Campanella, who has died for someone else, and listening to the story of a passenger of the Titanic, who did not try to survive by pushing away others for the sake of her students, then at last Giovanni regains life. The safety of his father's ship ends up unknown after all. At the end, Campanella's father says calmly, Campanella probably won't make it. But at the same time, he tells Giovanni, I met your father, he'll be back soon. That's how he knows his father is alive, so Giovanni's father probably comes back safely. The fact that the ship made it back in spite of the accident means that he was able to live by someone's favor. That teaches Giovanni what it means to live for someone and becomes an energetic and cheerful boy again. Well, that's the basic plot of the Night of the Milky Way train. It's the same as the plot of Spirited Away. Chihiro in Spirited Away also lives her life absent-minded in the opening scene. It's uncertain whether she's alive or dead. She has no desire or appetite, like no face. Spread it away is a story in which she regains humanity from the state where she has no desire or goal like no face. The reason why Chihiro's family are drawn into the mysterious world in the first place is because none of them really had a life. The mother can't face her daughter because of the death of her eldest son. The reason why her father decides to move is because he wants to change her mood. He doesn't give any reasons for moving like it's because of his job. At least it's not for Chihiro. The only reason can be that he wants to change his wife's mood because she's been closing her mind all this time. And Chihiro is in despair because she's separated from her friends. The question is, how are they going to live after the movie ends? I'm going to talk about it in the second half, but in fact, Miyazaki has a great happy ending for them. But the structure of the movie makes it hard for us to tell that it's a happy ending. It's a movie that Miyazaki made for himself. He loves his characters from the bottom of his heart, so he prepares a grand finale that made everyone happy, but I'll discuss that on the second half. I'll stop here for the first half today. In the second half, I'll tell a story that is a bit scary, but it will become a happy ending, so please do not worry. There are these stories which he told only to his favorite animators, and some are written in this book as evidence, but really, I'm going to talk about a really happy ending.